Welcome back TCS TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store TV coming to you from very loud street as you can probably hear. And today we're gonna to be looking at the Leica CL. And this is a very interesting camera and a quite a, a new design. And of course, Leicas are never good value for the money, but I like doing these reviews because they're always a lot of fun to play with. And I hope the CL won't disappoint. Now, Minolta actually had a partnership with Leica and they made a CL and a CLE camera way back in the day. So it's interesting that Leica is now reusing this nomenclature, but uh, it's a very interesting design. I want to show you this today. And I think we're just going to take a nice walk down the streets of Calgary, do some street shooting, maybe head down to the core and see some of the new buildings that we're building. There's some beautiful architecture. Hopefully we can have a lot of fun today and play with this very interesting, albeit expensive camera. Now using this T-mount system, I've got uh, a new experience here because T-mount was never known for having a lot of lenses and I've got a lot of lenses with me today. Stuff that I haven't played with before, so I'm excited to try it out. That's why Jordan has me so far away from that scarecrow so as not to get accosted and lose all of this gear. Uh, thank you, by the way, Leica, for letting us play with this here. And uh, we've got the classic 1856 lens on here. That's a standard kit lens. You can get the CL with that lens or with the 18, which sadly we don't have in the store yet. Now I've got the 23 F2, so that's your classic classic 35 mil focal length for Leica, but I also have this 55 to 135 on here right now. Look, I'm even using the hood, and this is a 3.5 to 4.5, so let's just call that an F4 average. It's actually quite compact and very, very well built, and I'm eager to play with this. I also have the brand new 60 mil macro 2.8, so I want to try all these lenses today and just see what they can do. You know, wait, this feels wrong. I, I distinctly remember another Leica CL video having uh, waterfowl in it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we should do this. Now the Leica CL uses the T-mount. This is actually the same thing that the Leica SL uses. And there is also a brand new Leica TL2 on the market as well. And we actually looked at the original T on our channel. I enjoyed it very much, but it was very much a different kind of camera. And you know what, I, I just wanna say what I really liked about the T when we first played with it is yes, it was grossly expensive, but it looked expensive. It was beautiful, clean edges, and it had a very unique kind of app-based touchscreen system. It was actually quite innovative for something from Leica. I really didn't expect that considering how they're always so retro and classic. And the Xvario cameras is what I would say this kind of more borrows its styling from. EVF here on the side, much like a rangefinder, more of a classic system with dials and a traditional back menu system with a control pad. I hope I like this a lot more than the X cameras, though I really hated those cameras. They were quite terrible. But I do like the lens mount. You got an APS-C sensor in here, 24 megapixels. And overall, I'm eager to play with this camera. Now, when we looked at the Leica T, the unique thing about it was the styling and the interface. And really on that camera, you either hated it or you loved it. Well, nobody really loved it. I guess you either hated it or you found it very novel and charming. That was, that's how I'm gonna put it here. Now, on the Leica CL, what they're really trying to do here is make a camera with a more conventional setup. And I think that is gonna be a positive thing for a lot of people. Again, though, you might still love or hate this interface. I'm gonna talk about why in just a bit. But let's just kind of explore the camera here. First off, this 2.36 million uh, dot viewfinder, it's nice, it's sharp, there's no lag, and there's no rolling shutters. So you don't get any weird jello effect when you're focusing, and you know, it's not distracting, and I like that. But still, this is an expensive camera, and the Leica SL had an amazing viewfinder, and when you're spending that kind of money, you kind of feel like you should get better technology in there. I'd like to see that be better. On the back, we have a very simple system, a playback button here, a function button which you can customize as a quick menu. So I hold this down, I get all my options, and I can choose this, and then if I just tap the button, it gives me that function. That works quite well. And then I've got my menu on the back, as well as a standard control pad. You're gonna use this for menu navigation and for moving around your autofocusing point. Now this camera is a touch autofocus system, but there's no way to touch interface here for the menu, so keep that in mind. Now the problem with this is that it's just a little bit confusing because on this side, if I hold down this button on the right dial, it brings up a predetermined custom menu that I can customize myself for what I want, and then I can turn the dial to change it, and if I press it once, just like the function button in the back, I can then choose the selected option. The thing is, I'm so used to here holding this down and turning a dial, then here having to push it once or hold it down longer. It's just ergonomically kind of a strange setup, and it is a little bit slow as well, so while I'm trying to switch functions, I'm sitting here waiting 
waiting for this to kick in. It's simple and it does certainly make use of the least amount of buttons, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a little bit weird, it's a little bit awkward, and it's slowing me down. Overall, I'm, I'm really harping over on the menu and the functions, the interface, because this is one thing that seems quite odd about this camera. The only thing I wanna throw in that always kinda of bugs me on the modern Leica cameras, the on-off switch has a little red dot, but that's when you're off. So when you turn the camera on, it covers the red dot, and that just seems backwards to me. So I always see this little red dot, and I'm like, oh, I left my camera on, I'm wasting battery life, and then lo and behold, no, it, it is off, it's okay. So I just wanna play with some manual focusing here with the macro lens, and so I figure, well, I could go in the menu and find the focusing option and change it to manual focus, but why not customize it in the function button so that I have quick access? I mean, that's what I should be doing here, customizing the camera, setting it up the way I like. So I go in the customization menu, and I know I've already complained about this, but I really dislike it. First off, when I go in to customize something, if it was the last option that I was using, for example, if the last thing I was doing was white balance, and I decide I want to get rid of white balance, I have to first go into a different option before I can delete white balance out of the menu. For for example, if I want to add something else. The next complaint I have that is I turn things off and on, they just keep moving up the list and bumping all the options up higher and higher. So if I wanted to customize some sort of order to all of these functions, I want to have focusing in a certain place, white balance in a certain place, forget it, it's annoying. I far rather wish I had something like the Sony tile system where I could say, top left, I want this, top right, I want this. Here, it's a little bit annoying going through, clicking on and off, but I have finally got it, so I'm gonna try some macro shots here. Now, as far as the manual focusing goes on here, we gotta remember that these lenses are focused by wire for sure. So, you know, it's hard to get it accurate, but you do have really nice peaking choices. You can have an auto punch in come up. And again, my only complaint is with an EVF viewfinder, it'd be really nice to also have a distance scale so you know what direction you're going in because I promise you the macro lens, auto magnified and without a distance scale, it takes a while till you figure out which direction you really need to turn it in. However, this 60 mm macro is beautiful optically, whether I'm off the screen or the EVF, buttery smooth, depth of field, really, really nice bokeh, and I can get very, very close. Uh, here's one thing, though, that's kind of a, a big misstep, and this is a really big one for the Leica system, and it would especially be useful right now shooting macro handheld. There's no image stabilization in the body, and there's none on these TL lenses, and that's just unbelievably ridiculous given what technology we're at right now and what the competition offers. I have no option for this. The SL lenses do have image stabilization, but they're humongous. Who's gonna carry those around on a body like this? So it really leaves me having to crank my ISO, use fast shutter speeds, and uh, again, compared to the competition, makes this camera look very, very poor. Okay, Chris, so how about telling us something you do like about this camera? Well, I think the thing would be the focusing system. I've actually been really impressed with it. Now, it is not fast like a Panasonic DFD system, and the only reason I mention that is because although this camera says Leica camera, Wetzler, Germany, you just never know how much of this is Panasonic, how much of it is Leica. I don't even want to get into that, but it doesn't focus as quick as a Panasonic does. I'll give you that, but it is going to be very, very predictable and very smooth. I've got lots of options from multiple area, single area. Uh, I actually especially like the tracking system. That works very well. Uh, basically, a lot like Nikon's 3D system. I move around a single point, put it on something, it locks on, and it'll adjust both distance and it'll also adjust position in the screen. It follows it tenaciously. I've been really happy. And any situation where it can't quite track the subject, it just locks like a single point. So I'm enjoying it because I don't have to go into AFC to make it work or AFS to turn it off. I just put it on, it works, and it's working really, really nicely. On top of that, we've got a really nice touch autofocusing system. Again, I've used it, it's accurate, it's working well. Just the only thing to keep in mind is I've been turning it off now because I keep hitting it up here with my thumb when I go to change this left dial. Now on top of that, I should mention that this is a contrast detect only system. So very accurate, very smooth, but maybe not the fastest thing on the planet. There's no phase detect hybrid stuff going on here. So as a continuous shooting camera, I don't think this will win any awards, but for what I'm doing here, street shooting, walking around, it seems very lovely. Now I do want to talk about image quality on this camera, but this is gonna be a fairly quick talk because you know, we've seen these 24 megapixel APS-C cameras. Everybody's making one and they're all very, very good. And with Leica cameras, the really unique thing about the image quality has nothing to do with dynamic range or low light performance or anything like that. It's really a distinct look. You know, really anytime I look at a Leica camera, they have a very unique warmth to them and a very unique look. And that is something that I will grant you, I have not seen on other camera bodies. But if we're talking about technical precision and handmade lenses and all of this high, high quality, tight tolerance kind of stuff, 
That may have been true back in the film days with the old Leica M lenses, but nowadays with modern manufacturing, everything is technically precise. Everything has tight tolerances. And so from a scientific standpoint, you're not getting anything better here. Okay, why can I not change this focusing mode? It's grayed out. I hate cameras when they're grayed out and they don't tell you why they're grayed out. They just say not pause. Oh, this doesn't even say anything. Oh, why am I in auto mode? What the f So I'm not a huge fan of the grip on here. I mean, this is as per most Leica cameras. There's nothing for your thumb to hold on to. There's nothing in the front. So you can get a hand grip for the camera, but of course, as usual, classic Leica, it's gonna be quite pricey and it's gonna block the bottom plate so you can't get into your Panasonic battery and SD card. So that's a real pain in the butt. And then of course, you could put a thumb thing on the back because that's what we use Leica Hot Shoes for. It's not for flash. It's to hold this beautiful CNC machined anodized aluminum thumb holder, uh, sparing no expense of course, I'm sure it'll be very pricey, so that you can then finally hold on to securely your camera. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy, who I'm sure you're not excited to see because we're looking at a Leica camera right now. But weirdly enough, Leica made some big steps forwards with their SL. It had a log profile, manual exposure, and they took all that stuff away on the CL now. So it does record 4K. That looks really great on the box and the spec sheet, but not at 24, not at 25 frames per second, some usable frame rates. It's not a camera for video. Don't buy this camera for video. It's not a good video camera. Well, it's conclusion time because honestly, I'm pretty much done with this camera. I mean, yeah, the images are fine. They're great and everything, but I think it's just a matter of an uncomfortable grip, convoluted menu systems, a very unintuitive interface, dials that honestly just keep getting pressed and touched. I'm changing my exposure comp without wanting to or finding myself in auto mode or a different mode entirely without wanting to. I mean, the camera just does not operate very well in the hand and that's one big negative. Okay, so then we talk about, well, yes, this is a Leica. We're talking about prestige, we're talking about price. And I know you, you folks have given me a hard time in the past for saying that I enjoyed this Leica, but who can afford it? It's crazy. And I totally understand that. I certainly cannot afford these cameras myself. But at least with the M10, and at least with the monochrome and the Leica T, you have cameras which are beautiful, they feel good, they're fun to use, and it makes the experience so enjoyable. And you cannot put a price on fun. That's the only way I could ever justify thousands of thousands dollars of expense. Now this thing, I mean, if you're like a Leica collector, yeah, you're going to buy it. But that does beg the question if we compare it against a Fuji X-T20 or, you know, we compare it against, uh, well, the A7R Mark III, you're f***ing kidding me? I mean, these cameras are so much better for the money and they do everything this does in a much better way. No image stabilization? I mean, seriously, I think Leica needs to stick to making prestigious type, you know, works of art that are so fun to use and give you unique experience. Anything like this, the x -Vary this just reeks of old X Vario. Anyways, I think you guys get the gist of the fact that I didn't really enjoy this camera very much. I hope you enjoyed this video though, and of course remember, check us out on Instagram, tweet to us, subscribe please, get us to 300,000, we're so close, and uh, let us know your comments and your feelings below as well. And until next week, keep in mind, I love you, I miss you, and we'll see you soon.